Hey y'all, it's Chris and Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks. And today we are making my favorite chocolate cake layers and chocolate icing. Both of these recipes are in our first cookbook. You can't find a better chocolate cake. All right, y'all, we're gonna start by adding our dry ingredients. We're gonna sift those together in a bowl, set them aside, and then start our cake mix. All right, so you're gonna use two and a half cups of self-rising flour. There's one cup, two cups, and a half cup. You're gonna add your soda and bacon powder. So we're gonna put in a teaspoon. Even if this is self-rising, this is a good recipe, so trust it. Teaspoon of bacon powder. Three quarter cups of Hershey's cocoa. Or whatever cocoa you can find, but my favorite's Hershey's. All right, and then you've got soda, a half teaspoon. Half teaspoon of soda. I'm sure when my pup hears me say that, she thinks I'm talking about her. Because our dog's name is Soda. All right, so we're gonna sift this together. So that's your flour, your soda, your baking powder, and your cocoa. And I just like to do this because it really distributes the cocoa and the cake batter better than just throwing cocoa in there, okay? So this is my favorite way to make chocolate cake is to sift it together first. Now we're gonna set that aside and start mixing up our cake. We're gonna start, let's see with sugar, butter, cooking oil, and eggs. So you're gonna have three quarter cups of cooking oil. I'm using corn oil. Just any canola or vegetable oil is fine. Three eggs. There's one. Two. Our butter, which is a stick at room temperature, which is a half cup. And I use salted butter in everything I make. So no matter which recipe you got, if I'm saying butter, it's salted. Okay? And then you've got your sugar, and your sugar is two and a quarter cups. There's one, two, and a quarter. Now I'm gonna turn it on. Oh, by the way, I'm using this old fashioned mixer today because my daughter is coming over. She thought this was the coolest thing that we got this mixer, it's an old antique. So that's what we're using today. Since she's coming, I'm making her cake with it. Um, and the cool thing about this mixer is if you look, it'll say uh, blend cookies, muffins, one bowl cakes, and it tells you what number, add dry ingredients to put the mixer on to do stuff like that. And we're about to add dry ingredients, so we'll put it on that one. Now this cake has a very wet batter, okay? So I'm going to just go ahead and Start putting stuff in here. We're gonna add sour cream. It's a half cup of sour cream. A cup of milk. I'm gonna go ahead and put some vanilla in it. I'm gonna start adding my dry ingredients. You can add them a half cup at a time or a quarter cup, however you wanna do it. 
And once you get about half of your ingredients in there, then you're going to put in your coffee. This is eight ounces of strong coffee. Now I'm going to turn it up. And we're going to beat this about two minutes. It looks really good. Now this is a simple cake. Super easy to make. To ma I mean, it's really easy. It's got a very liquidy batter. It is so super moist and delicious and um, if you don't like coffee try to use the coffee anyway because it tastes so good with chocolate uh, you're not going to notice you're not going to taste the chocolate just enhances the flavor of the chocolate all right when you're mixing a cake batter um, you shouldn't over mix it and so you should mix it about two minutes once your flour's added in there and that should do it that's all you got to do. All right, I'm going to spray a 13 by 9 sheet cake pan. And I'm making a sheet cake today instead of a layer cake. Just, it's so much easier on us. And quicker. It's easier to serve, too. And we're going to make May's favorite chocolate icing. So you'll get to see that, too. Now, all of my cake layers that's in the first cookbook have more flour, much more flour in them than a cake mix has. So you're going to find that they're going to make a lot deeper cake than a cake mix. All right, we'll see you in a little bit. Boy, it's going to be good. I put too much batter in my cake, y'all, and it ran over in my new oven. You really shouldn't fill it over halfway full, and it was about three quarters full. So save your extra batter and make cupcakes out of it. I messed up and put it all in my 13 by 9, and so it's in the bottom of my stove. But it looks so good. It's going to be delicious. And now I've got a stove to clean up. So don't make that mistake. My cake batter recipes make a lot of cake batter. So no matter what pan you're using, make sure that you don't fill it over halfway full. The only cake that's in there that doesn't rise very much is the carrot cakes and the cakes that have a lot of fruit in them, like my fruit cake, um, that kind of stuff. But just a normal layer cake, if you use my homemade layers, um, I wouldn't fill it over half full. But don't it look delicious and I can eat a piece of it. Now, I will tell you this. If you're going to make a 13 by 9 instead of a round layer, I would bake it at 325, not 350. Because it's a, it takes a lot longer to cook a large cake like this and get it completely done in the middle than it does a round layer cake. Okay? So I would turn the oven down to 325 degrees, which is what I did with this cake. And you can tell it's not a bit too brown. And it is... So good. All right, I'm getting me a piece of parchment. And I'm actually going to flip this cake out, mainly because we're doing a video today. 
and I want it to have time to cool off good before I ice it. Um, but now you can leave this in the pan and just ice it in the pan if you want to. I just don't have time for it to cool off. So what I want to do is flip it out to help cool it off sooner. But you don't have to do that. Since this is a very delicate cake, I'm going to do it this way. It's a super soft crumb. But it's a very pretty layer and very tall. Um, so, I mean, if you've got a regular oven that you can put a pan underneath it, you can go ahead and make it like this and let it boil over if you want to. And that way it's a nice, big, tall layer. Um, and if not, that's fine too, whatever you want to do. But look how pretty and tall that is for a birthday cake. So we're going to ice this with May's favorite chocolate icing. So we'll mix that up right quick. I'm going to go put this in the big freezer and get it cooled down some. This icing is my family's favorite fudge icing. It is a lot like the icing that people make on the stovetop without all the fuss. It tastes like it. You can make it really rich in chocolate by using water, or you can make it milk chocolate by using milk. My family likes it made with water. Okay, they like it real fudgy. So we are going to use three quarter cups of cocoa, three quarter cups of water with a stick and a half of butter. And we're actually going to put this in the microwave and get it warm enough to melt the butter good. So it's a stick and a half, which is three quarter cups of butter with three quarter cups of water with three quarter cups of cocoa and so the only diff the only other thing we use is eight cups of powdered sugar and some vanilla flavoring so we're going to put this in the microwave all right and i'm going to put a cloth over it so it don't make a mess because lord knows i've already got a mess in my stove today i don't need my a mess in my microwave too now, I'm going to sift this powdered sugar because we've moved and we've been all over the place and it is just not light and fluffy like it should be, all right? So, I'm just going to measure it. There's two cups of it. And I'm not putting my cocoa in there because I don't like getting cocoa in my sifter, okay? So, we will whisk in the cocoa once we're finished doing this part. All right, that's good. That's plenty of powdered sugar. Now we're going to add our cocoa. This makes a lot of icing. Okay, so just put it in your mixing bowl and turn it on a low speed. And let it mix up before you start adding your liquid. You can tell on the side of that bowl I need to go around it with a spatula. So you just want to mix your cocoa and your powdered sugar up good. And now you're going to add your warm butter and uh, water, okay? Okay, I'm going to add a little vanilla to it. That's a little peaty piece of butter melting right there on the top. That's what that is. Boy, that looks good, don't it? Looks very delicious. 
we're just going to take this and put it on the sheet pan and ice it for her birthday. Uh, let me get me some scissors and trim it a little bit. The actual parchment part. And we're not decorating or decorating it or anything. I just wanted to ice it up. I wanted to show y'all that this has plenty of icing in the recipe. All right, I'm going to grab my turntable just because it's easier. Now, if you want your icing thin, like if you're, sli if you're icing um, round layers and you want to put it on there really thin, you can do it with this icing. Uh, but if you don't ice it immediately, you can tell it's starting to get thick already. You can always uh, microwave it a little bit. Just warm it up a little bit if you got it in a glass bowl like this. So I'm just going to put a lot of icing on the top to start with. And this is going to want to slide, so I'm just going to hold on to it. I didn't put icing underneath the parchment. All right. But I just wanted y'all to see how pretty this is if you want to make a birthday cake out of it. And of course, we're going to cut it and let y'all see how it looks on the inside as well. The key to icing chocolate is make sure you're always on the icing and not on the cake. And have plenty of icing on the top to push it over. And if you do that, then it usually works pretty good. I'm just trying to get the corners pretty and then I'm going to put a design in it. But you got to hurry because it does, you know, start setting up pretty good. All right, here we go. Then we can do a little bit of a swirl on the side. You can't beat it. And there you have it, a good old chocolate cake. I promise you'll like it. And you don't have to flip it upside down and ice it like I did. You can just ice it in the sheet pan and make it simple. If you ice it in the sheet pan, I would make a half a recipe because you can see I've got extra. This makes a lot of icing in case you want to make one of those really tall stack um, chocolate cakes, you know, with the thin layers. But you can make a half recipe and ice it in the sheet pan and make everybody just very happy. Super moist. And remember, we just iced this cake. Just get a bite. Yummy. Boy, that's good. That is so good. It would be absolutely delicious with some vanilla ice cream. Woo! Y'all give my chocolate cake a try. You're going to love it. And we will see you next time on Collard Valley Cooks, where we cook like our mamas did. Bye, y'all. Love ya. Cook it up like mama used to do.